And now, Man in the Arena, presented by... Whoa, we don't have that sponsorship here on the channel, but I mean, hey, if you want to sponsor us Under Armour, um, hey, Greedo plays biz at gmail.com is the business email. I'm just saying, but folks, welcome to Man in the Arena, Daniel Jones's story. And of course, this is based on the New York Giants franchise mode we did here on the channel. That series is likely done. I think we did 137 episodes with that series. It was a whole lot of fun. Links will be in the description down below if you haven't seen it. So obviously, that's how where this is going to be based on. I think we're going to do four episodes with this Man in the Arena type series, um, one for every Super Bowl season for Giants. Jones. And yeah, let's get into it. And also, folks, if you are new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button down below for more. And also make sure to smash that like button as well. With the sixth pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Daniel Jones, oh, quarterback okay. Duke. So they do love a quarterback. Yeah, look, this is a player ideal size and athleticism. He can really move around. I mentioned that limited support. The question is, where does he fall on the range? Is he Ryan Tannehill? That's the floor. You're hoping he's Matt Ryan. And I think he was just a little bit better than Matt Ryan. But the 2019 and 2020 seasons for Daniel Jones weren't very good. And they weren't very good for the New York Giants as a whole. Eli Manning retires. In comes Daniel Jones. And this team has really just struggled to find their footing in the NFC East. However, 2021 was the start of something different. I mean, really nothing changed. The team still wasn't very good. So, I mean, this video is about 2022. So, yeah, just roll that 2021 tape. It's not great. Second and 10 for Daniel Jones, looking to throw it. Yeah, okay, well, threw it to the wrong guy. I'm not gonna lie, I was looking for the corner route. If you look back, I had him setting up for a first and goal for Jones. Corey Clement in the game. He's gonna roll to his right, does Danny Dimes. Looking to throw a pump fakes, try to sneak it in to Elijah Penny. And that's not a good sight if you're a Giants fan and Jones is gonna fumble the football. Shaq Barrett punches it out. JPP, the former Giant, scores. I mean, fire the cannons. It's a 45 to 15 game in favor of Tampa Bay. The Giants, again, feels like we say this a lot of playing for pride. Jones tries to squeeze one in right there. It's Kenny Galladay. It's picked off. Third and 21 for the Giants with nine minutes left. Jones just looking for something deep shot downfield. Evan Ingram. It's picked off again. And that was only two games we showed you right there. I mean, it kept going on and on. So the Giants knew something needed to happen in the offseason to change their fortunes, to turn things around. And it all started with really getting Daniel Jones some help. So we picked Darren Kennard in the first round. The thing is, he's not very good. Like, in the long run, he just was terrible in this series. So that didn't really help. So we actually picked a competent offensive lineman. We took Cade Mays, the man out of Tennessee. That was a really good pick for us in the second round. And then... You know, in the third round, we're like, you know what? We're going to take your potential replacement. We picked Brock Purity because we thought he could have beaten out Jones for the starting job. Didn't happen, but we added some pressure with Purity. I mean, Madden went so far to actually giving Purity Jones' number in the draft screen. They have him wearing eight. I mean, look at the disrespect. My goodness. But anyways, the 2022 season starts in Washington, and we're taking on the Washington football team, my night football and honestly, Jones had a pretty good game. He threw for a lot of yards in this one, and the Giants looked like they were well on their way to victory. They were on top at the end of the game, but a rookie quarterback playing in his first ever game by the name of JT Daniels did this. Second left, the football team are gonna say a prayer. JT Daniels off his back foot, lobs it up, gets it pretty far, and... No, I, I can't do this. I'm putting down the headset, no. No, 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 but I'm actually, I, you can hear me putting down the headset. I'm not doing it with this game anymore. You gotta be kidding me. No chance. Oh my God, the football team would hit by three. So for week number two against the San Francisco 49ers, the Giants returned home for the first time this season. And one thing was on their minds, it was just to dominate this 49ers team. That's exactly what they did. Daniel Jones, Four touchdown passes in this game, given only 241 yards, but it was the statement needed for the Giants to put themselves back really in the winning column to start this 2022 season. But this Giants team really did struggle at the gate, starting the season two and three, and after a loss in Green Bay, Wisconsin, the Packers, they were sitting at two and three, heading into Tampa Bay, the same spot where they had that embarrassment last season on Monday Night Football. But something was different this year. Daniel Jones took down the GOAT, and of course it was the pick at the end of the game by Isaac Yadam, the pick six that sealed it. But still, Jones played a very solid game, and it was the game 
that put the Giants on the map this season. And week seven was the rematch against the Washington football team and the Giants got their revenge. Daniel Jones putting together a game-winning drive leading to a Graham Gano field goal to win the game. The Giants ended up winning it 29 to 27, a huge victory against the same team that beat them on a game-winning Hail Mary just about a month previous. But week number nine was the week that restarted maybe the most iconic rivalry we played throughout this entire series, the Giants and Cowboys. That fire was lit one more time. It was this prime time game. And now the Giants come back, did come up a little bit short in this one, losing this one by a score of 49 to 46. But Daniel Jones played one of his best games, probably the best game of his entire career, passing for 446 yards, six touchdowns in this game. But in the end, it was just too little, too late for the G-Men, but still the hope was there for this Giants team keeping up with one of the better offenses in the NFL and the Cowboys. But after losing that shootout against the Dallas Cowboys, the Giants responded with the win Houston over the Texans and then came into this Eagles game, beating the Philadelphia Eagles by seven points, 31 and 24. But the major story out this game was the career day by Daniel Jones. And no, it wasn't the most impressive day with the passing yards. He still had 253 yards with two touchdowns, but the man was perfect passing, 21 for 21, a perfect passer rating as well. Jones, the Giants picking up the victory in week 10, officially starting their push the playoffs. So it's week 11, the Giants are 6-4, and four. the NFC East Championship is likely out the picture, but a wild card is definitely still in play, but my goodness, check out this finish to this game against the Chicago Bears, it is nuts. It's a third and 23 with 24 seconds left. Jones on the outside. Gonna throw on the run. Going for Slayton again. Oh my god, he comes down with it. Slayton stays on his feet. The 15-10. He gets in. One of the greater catches you're ever gonna see. Slayton comes down with the football. He stays on his feet and he runs it in for six. Daniel Jones' sixth touchdown pass of the game that gives the Giants the victory. They beat the Chicago Bears 45-41 turning their record now to 7-4. But after this Bears game, the Giants would go on to lose their next four games, losing against the Jaguars, losing against the Titans, losing to the Dallas Cowboys. By the way, that Titans game, they lost in a 100-point shootout. But anyway, they lose against the Cowboys, and then they lose again to the Philadelphia Eagles. Then they would respond by beating the Minnesota Vikings to stay in the hunt, and now they would take on the Baltimore Ravens Week 18 at Sunday Night Football, the final game of the regular season. Win and you're in, lose and you're done. And after a slow start on Sunday Night Football, the Giants would take control though late in the third quarter, getting out to a lead in the fourth, being up by 10, 41 to 31. That lead was impossible for Ravens to come back from. However, Baltimore is already in the playoffs at this point. This game really didn't mean much to them. Definitely nowhere near as important to the Baltimore Ravens as the Giants. The Giants would take over at the end again and win the football game 41 to 38, putting themselves back in the playoffs for the first time since 2016. And of course, the Giants' first playoff game was against the reigning defending NFC champions, of course, the Carolina Panthers, led by Sam Darnold, Christian McCaffrey, and Rob Gronkowski. This Panthers team scores a lot, and they score in a hurry, but the Giants scoring two touchdowns in the second half put them in a position to tie the game up. Late, though, in the fourth quarter, Graham Gano would knock down a game-winning field goal, and the New York Giants would knock off the Carolina Panthers as the sixth seed in the playoffs, knocking off the number three-seeded NFC South champs. The Giants would move on to the divisional round to face the Green Bay Packers, the number one seed in the NFC, and this game wasn't even close. The Giants came into Lambeau and blew this team out. Even though they had problems in Lambeau earlier in the season, the Giants go into Wisconsin and beat the brakes off the Packers. I mean, your final score is 55 to 13. We even got backup quarterback Gardner Minshew scoring rushing touchdowns in this game and even doing Lambeau leaps in the fourth quarter. The final score is 55 to 13. It was all Giants, true Green Bay Packers fashion in the playoffs. The Giants don't have any problems in Green Bay and they're moving on the NFC Championship game with the ticket to the Super Bowl on the line. And the NFC Championship game would be in Dallas against the Dallas Cowboys. The Giants were already 0-2 against the Cowboys coming into this matchup. Again, winner goes to the Super Bowl. The Giants already having lost the Cowboys twice in this season would start out early and quick. They would score seven points, go up 7-0, and didn't look back from there. They would take control, have the lead throughout this entirety of this game, winning it 34-31. The Giants would shock the world, winning three straight road games against the 
three best teams in the NFC in the Panthers, Packers, and Cowboys in back-to-back -back weeks, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back weeks, going to the Super Bowl, taking on the Baltimore Ravens, who had just defeated the New England Patriots in the AFC Championship game. It will be a rematch of Week 18, but for now, the Giants are heading to the Super Bowl with a huge victory in Dallas. So no one thought the Giants were going to be in this spot. No one would have predicted the Giants to be in Super Bowl 57 just a year after missing the playoffs. This was a season where they lost four straight games down the final stretch of the year. They came back, won their final two, and of course the team they beat to get into the playoffs in Week 18 on Sunday Night Football is the Baltimore Ravens. And guess who are playing in the big game? Of course it is the Ravens. We mentioned it earlier here from Glendale, Arizona in the State Farm Stadium. The problem with the Giants though again is that they weren't expected to be in this spot. They fell behind 10-0 and really just couldn't get going. It was once 13-0 as the Giants, again, couldn't get anything going on offense. They would fall down 20-0 and before the end of the half, the Giants would score a touchdown, making it 20-7, but the Ravens offense kept putting points on the board and it just was too much for the Giants to handle both on offense and on defense. Baltimore getting up to 31-10 at one point. The Giants would cut it to 14, but then a big touchdown by Devin Duke. Duvernay put the Ravens up by 21 points very late in the third quarter. It was 45 to 24, and there just wasn't anything the Giants could do to make up that point total. The game was over. The Baltimore Ravens won 59 to 38 after a Lamar Jackson read option with two minutes left in the game would definitely ice it. The Ravens were your Super Bowl 57 champions. The Giants would come up just short this year, but again, it was a season where no one expected them to make this run, and it was a good launching point for 2023.